don't wear a hat. Isn't there a hockey game today? Yeah. I can take it off, don't worry. Alright. Okay, so just out of respect, I am not going to wear a hat. But I thought just to get to break the ice. You know, this is actually the only Oilers stuff I own. Everything else has something to do with Canucks. You know? But, yeah, sorry guys. Yeah, yeah. So my birthday comes up in November. I want a onesie. I'm, I'm totally kidding. Okay, so first of all, I want to thank all the singles that came up uh, to share. Truly, it was a very refreshing weekend. Uh, we had these guys from Calgary come down. There's a track in the back row, and I can't pronounce everyone else's name. I can't even spell your name track correctly. I'm kidding, but no, it's like that, okay. But really, you know, the whole thing of this weekend was about being fearless. And being fearless comes from actually understanding where you are in God's plan. And I may talk a little like lyrics because I DJ, so a lot of times, you know, when I say God's plan, don't think of the Drake song, like just think of God's plan or hashtag God's plan. Yeah. So I want to give you a preface before I show you this little eight minute video that I'm going to narrate over, is that way back in March 28th, I had like a near death experience. And before I go into that, today's title of today's message is called Survive, Revive, Thrive. So I had this like near miss situation where um, about a week before that date, I wasn't thinking straight. In fact, I didn't feel motivated to do anything. And uh, a couple days after the 28th, or so a couple days before the 28th, like I just couldn't do anything. Like normally every day I'm doing four or five creative projects and I really thrive when I'm doing something creative, but I couldn't. I was in survival mode and everything was really, really harsh. Like the littlest things like doing the dishes or feeding the cats or like just couldn't do it. I just didn't feel like it. And um, so on Sunday night, I checked myself into emergency, but before I did, I called the brothers up and I said, guys, pray for me. I don't feel good. And people like Carrie and so many other brothers came out and prayed. It was like, I went into the ER and it was like crazy. Normally when I go into ER, cause I've been there like a couple times in the past two years, you gotta wait for six hours. And I'm not used to that, because in Vancouver, you go to the ER, in and out, you know, three hours tops. But you gotta wait six hours. So I packed my backpack, I got my little laptop, you know, just trying to get myself into reading the Bible or doing something, you know? So I go in and within a half an hour, they, um, they check my, um, my blood pressure and it's at 200 and something. And then the lady's like, wow, you're really pale. Let me just check your blood. And, uh, and so she checks my blood sugar and it's at like 31.8. And, um, and the lady rebukes me and says, what are you doing with your life? And I'm like, I don't know, it's 31.8, did I win? Like, I don't know, like it's a high number, it must be good. And they're like, no, that's really bad. And so within 30 minutes I got into, um, really fast care. And then the doctor had a one-on-one -on -one with me and he said, you know, you shouldn't be alive right now. He said that anyone with a blood sugar over 24 should be in a coma. Wow. And then right away I thought, oh, Terry, pray for me. That's what happened. <laughs> you know, or the brothers pray for me, you know, and it's like those littlest things. It's like whenever you're in survival mode, whenever you're in that dark place, you know, who are you calling to help you get to the better place. Like, who's that person? Like, who's your person, you know what I mean? And for me, like, I'm, sometimes I'm too transparent. In fact, I'm so transparent, sometimes I say the wrong things. And so, you know, a lot of times I have to, like, 
be careful because I embarrass my wife. <laughs> I embarrass the people in the singles ministry. And I don't mean to, I just, I don't know. Maybe I need to up my dose, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, so the doctor gives me a one-on-one. -on -one. He's like, you've got to be a spiritual person. He's like, I've never seen anyone in this hospital higher than a blood sugar of 24 alive. He's like, are you a spiritual person? I'm like, yeah, of course. Actually, I didn't know we were going to get through this, the, um, the waiting room right away in a half an hour. I brought my laptop. I was going to try to do some, read some manuals and things like that. He's like, no, no. So they put me on these things, like this magnesium drip and this insulin thing. And anyway, it was, uh, it was great. Like they, like with, well, not great, but within 12 hours, they had me down from 31.8 to 18%. And then, um, and then the doctor gave me like this prescription. He said, Hey, you know, um, you gotta be on insulin. I'm like, okay, I don't know. Sure. So, and then I gotta get these things that poke in your skin. Personally, I hate needles. Anything to do with needles, like, don't get me wrong. Like, I like watching uh, action movies and, you know, kickboxing and all that kind of stuff. But when it gets to blood, I'm like, no, won't have it. So, and every day, I gotta poke my blood and check my blood sugar. And then um, I remember that brother, uh, Jason Rosadu. Do you guys know him? Yeah. 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 So he was in a similar situation, but not as extreme. He read this book called um, The Obesity Code, and um, it talks about all this stuff. And um, anyway, he said, look, in the book, he said, you can actually get out of being diabetic if you follow this strict diet. And I was like, okay, sure. I don't know. So when I was at the hospital, they weighed me, and I was at 350 something. Uh, and so I was like, okay, yeah, that's normal. That's what I remember with my weight, you know. Uh, and then every day, spinach salad, dill pickle juice, 100 milliliters, 100 milliliters of apple cider vinegar, unfermented, thanks to um, Elisa here. That's a big difference. Anyway. So, you know, I, I took on this diet thing and I called it the life and death diet. You know, it's because it's like, I shouldn't be alive. God's given me an opportunity now to thrive. So what am I going to do differently to revive myself? Am I going to continue debauching on buffet places? Sure, I can still go to buffet places, but I'm not going to eat the deep fried food anymore, you know? Or I'm not going to max out every three, four days going and getting a squishy, I mean a slushy, or you know what I mean? I'm just going to like... It's life or death. There's no other way. God's yeah. given me another chance. So, so I do this blood test thing, and this machine is really cool. Like it can tell your insulin level, it can tell your heart's level. Like these guys have gotten better at it, you know. Yeah. So, a week into it, I lost like 15 pounds. Another week into it, another 15 pounds. Three weeks in, I lost like 75 pounds. Awesome. I'm like, I haven't done a lick of any kind of like exercise because I can't. I don't have the strength yet. So I lost like 70 plus pounds. The brothers are praying for me every day. And uh, life is getting better. So it, it, the hard thing is that in your current life right now, is it going to take a life and death situation to change your heart? Like there's that scripture that says, you know the good you ought to do, but you don't do it. You know, or okay, and I don't. The next thing I'm about to share, it's not a downer on a DPI song, but that sanctuary song, I hate it and I love it. You know, like I love the melody of it, but it says, "Oh Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary." What does that mean? Oh God, please test me. It's like, no, I don't want to be tested. I want to stay in the comfort zone a little bit longer. You know, and it's like, no, you know, and uh, I shared with some of the brothers in, in Toronto. And um, they said, no, bro, God has a plan for you still. He doesn't want to take you away yet. And I was so moved by that, you know? And it's true. Every single person in this room can give a life story situation of how they became uh, more connected to their faith community, how they became a Christian, you know? Like, everyone has that story. And the more we talk about it freely, the more we give God the glory. The more we give God the glory, you know, the more he blesses us. And, you know, in my hardship right now, like, I still feel kind of fat, but 
and I still feel kind of bloated, but I don't know how I'm doing it until people come up to me and tell me, you know? And everyone's saying, yeah, you look better, bro. I'm like, okay, yeah, sure. You know? So and all I'm saying is that these are the people in your life, right? And whether they're being transparent, telling you the good or the bad in your life, like, are you taking it out of love or are you taking it out of defensiveness? You know? And it's like, do you really want to thrive in God's plan? Or do you want to just take it easy, you know? So this video that I'm about to show you right now, and I got it, uh, so I'm wearing glasses now because that's part of the thing <laughs> of when you have a lot of sugar in your blood, you know? What's that? Yeah, I was losing my sight even before, like, so I had a lot. So right now, um, the prescription I started with was not prescription, but reading glasses. I was at two, and then two weeks into it, I dropped to 1.5. Now I'm at like one. It's kind of nice. Yeah. Feels better, but I still have to use them, you know? And I thought it was like a play on I'm going downwards, because my entire family wears glasses except me. I'm thinking, hey, I'm the one in front of the computer screen. I should be the one wearing glasses, yeah. Yeah. but I'm not. So, okay, so we're going to watch this little video. Give me a sec. Let me cue it up from my end. So, okay, so the music you're about to hear, um, try not to be um, encouraged by the music, but look at the message. Because, you know, I mix music really well, and I'm really prideful about it. <laughs> so, just look at the message. I don't know if you guys can read the screen okay from the cheap seats in the back. Yes. But, yeah. Okay. All right, so. Oh, okay, you're ready. Okay, so whenever you're ready, I'm going to press play from my end so I can read along. Who is your giant? If you are David, who is your Goliath? There will always be many giants in your life. There will always be stress. There will always be anxiety. There will always be oppression. There will always be depression. There will always be overwhelm. Will you buckle under pressure? Or will you rise to the challenge? David ran into the army of the Philistines. 1 Samuel 17, 48. When the Philistines stood up and approached, David ran toward the line of battle to meet him. David ran towards the battle. David's zeal was like an eagle. The eagle is the only bird that flies into the storm. It's time for you to fly as an eagle. Fly with the Holy Spirit. Romans 12, 2. Stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life satisfying and perfect in his eyes. You have been called to a higher purpose. What is your dream? What is your ID? What is your mission? Ephesians 4, 23-24 Now it's time to be made new by every revelation that's been given to you. 
and to be transformed as you embrace the glorious Christ within as your new life and live in union with him. For God has recreated you all over again in his perfect righteousness and you now belong to him in the realm of true holiness. You are a new life into Christ. You are a champion growing your faith. You will emerge out of the ashes of doubt. You will face your fears with the Holy Spirit. Your knees might quiver. You will sweat. The goal is ready for the taking. The harvest is plenty for the picking. Romans 6 4. Therefore, we were buried with him through the baptism into death. So that just as God the Father in all his glory resurrected the Anointed One, we too might walk confidently out of the grave into a new life. You are risen in Jesus and now run after it. Run after your dream. Run after your ID. Run after your goal. Run after it. With every fiber of your being. If the spirit of the one who resurrected Jesus from the dead lives inside you, then you can be sure that he who raised him will cast the light of life into your mortal bodies through the life-giving power of the spirit residing in you. You will never be about your purpose until you are fully grateful. Grateful for the wisdom and discernment with God. James 1.5 If anyone longs to be wise, ask God for the wisdom and he will give it. He won't see your lack of wisdom as an opportunity to scold you over your failures, but he will overwhelm your failures with his generous grace. Be grateful for the diverse connection in Jesus. 1 Peter 2.9 But you are God's chosen treasure, priests who are kings, a spiritual nation set apart as God's devoted ones. He called you out of the darkness to experience his marvelous light, and now he claims you as his very own. He did this so that you would broadcast his glorious wonders throughout the world. You have all you need in God. To fulfill your destiny. All you need is to harness the Holy Spirit. Make it a team partnership with the like-minded. Our diversity in Jesus will help us overcome the impossible. 1 Peter 1 2. God the Father knew you and chose you long ago, and His Spirit has made you holy. As a result, you have obeyed Him and have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. May God give you more and more grace and peace. By grace, we will overcome the odds. We will be victorious because of Christ Jesus. Amen.
So yeah, I really skipped up for myself because I don't know if you do this, but every time I'm like quiet times, I always have like this kind of epic music playing in the background because God speaks to me in a way that Patrick, you can do this. You know, Coy, you can do this. You know, like it's the hard part is having the confidence, but the confidence is not that hard when you know what you're grateful for. Yeah. So. Like, do you really want to thrive for God? Do you want to sit back? You know, or if you are in a situation where you can't thrive for God, at least you can, you know, get on the hotline and call the brothers or sisters up and talk about it, right? We can definitely make a difference for God if we really want to, you know? So I want to thank you guys for um, coming today. We have a little bit more coming up in our program, so... Uh, I guess the slogan is, can you read that? Yeah. Survive, revive, thrive. <laughs> Survive, revive, and thrive. Thank you, Patrick. It was great. Thank you very much. It was great to, uh, to have the singles here this weekend. We had the opportunity, or I had the opportunity. I heard there was a big party last night at the Slattery's. Yes. Yeah. And uh, they brought you until uh, 1 o'clock in the morning, I think. I heard. But uh, just, uh, just so that I can put the names out there, I want to just thank all those who came from Calgary. They, uh, they drove up in a van. Trek, Irene, Emma Bell, Justice, Stuart, and Bell. Congratulations. In Edmonton. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, I had the opportunity to join them for uh, Patrick did mention the uh, the buffet at Ming Yang Ming's today, so I did uh, join them for a brunch at Yang Ming's, and uh, I don't want to do that again. <laughs> but survive, revive, and thrive. You know, I think the the point that I really appreciated about the lesson was the fact that. Those three life situations we can all relate to, can't we? Yeah. yeah. And I don't know where you are today, surviving in your faith, feeling like you're being revived in your faith, or you're thriving in your faith. But we can all relate in some way or another to that. And I really like the, uh, the imagery, and, and I want to encourage us all as I close, is let us choose to be the eagle yeah. that flies into the storm, yeah. Yeah. makes the choice, to fly into that storm, remembering that we have God's spirit inside each and every one of us. What an incredible, an incredible imagery.